trustees meeting via Zoom in order to comply with Santa Clara County Public Health Department's directives regarding large gatherings. As a result of the threat of COVID-19, this meeting is being held solely by video and telephonic me means and has been made accessible to members of the public on the link at the Moreland School District website and on board docs. Any person who requires accommodations to access this meeting has been asked to contact the superintendent's office within 24 hours of this meeting. This meeting is being recorded and may be published at a later date. And with that, we will move right to the flag salute. If you will please join me. Rising. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will report out that there was no action taken this evening in closed session and move to approval of the agenda. We do have um, a, sm a small revision in that we will need to reconvene in closed session following open session um, for item 2D. Are there any other changes to this evening's agenda? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? Um, I'll, I'll move to amendment? approve the amended agenda. Thank you, Brian. And Sally, your second? Yeah. Great. <laughs> okay, roll call vote. Um, Trustee Hung. Aye. Trustee Chatrathi. Aye. Trustee Pencil. Aye. Trustee Salas. Aye. And Trustee Sutton, aye. And on to comments from the public, Ryan. All right, good evening, everyone. Comments from the public. Members of the public may address the board on any subject of concern to you, including those not on tonight's agenda. However, provisions of the Brown Act preclude any action as an unagendized item, no response is required or permitted from the board or district staff. And as already stated, no action can be taken. The board, however, may instruct the superintendent to follow up, which may or may not include placing the item on a future meetings agenda. If you would like to address the board this evening, please complete the request for public comment form within the first 15 minutes of the board meeting being called to order in public session. The Google form is located on the district website, as well as the Moreland School District Board Docs website. On the form, please list the agenda item or items you would like to speak to. If your comments do not pertain to an agendized item, please write public comment. Those that submit a public comment for Form will have their comments read by a staff member by the appropriate time at the appropriate time so that they are included in the meeting record. And Tanya, what do we have any public comments? We have three public comments, but they're for the reopening of school. Thank you. Comments report. Dr. Going. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Um, as usual, we start this year uh, during COVID with some student celebrations. So we have two tonight to share with you. And so Tanya, I think we're waiting for the kids to come on or where are we with them? Um, I don't see Liam in. If you wanna start with the pain group, I can start uh, letting them on. Great, okay. Um, so the we'll start with the pain scout troop. I am pleased to introduce to you some Panthers who have come out on the weekend and took the time to paint some socially distanced paw prints at Payne in preparation for the return of our school in hybrid. You can see here what they've, they've done. So as they start to come on, I'd like to introduce and welcome you to Stephen Rose, Claire Lazzarini, Connor Lazzarini, Charles Yu, Jordan Paris. Volovich, I think I didn't say that right, Paravol. I would like you to say your last name for you. Can you un unmute and say your last name? Is he with us yet? We'll do that in a minute. They're joining us, yeah. Great. Nate Steinshin, Benjamin Hasovic, Takashi Chen, and Jennifer Lazzarini, pain teacher, is also here to help explain how they came up with the idea and painted 300 paw prints.
for incoming students. Jennifer, are you on yet? Where's Jennifer? Almost. I will say Patty and I toured all our schools this weekend and um, we saw uh, those paw prints there and we saw other prints at other schools that represented the school. And Jordan, I see you're on all dressed up in your scout uniform. Can you share your last name with us? I love it. Here's go out. <laughs> Oh, that is that is a beautiful last name. All right, Jennifer, I see you're on with your whole family. So I'm going to turn it over to you to tell us a little bit about the idea. Yes, um, Mrs. Berg, our principal and um, our pain, pain pack wanted to get together to make the social distance spots a little more pain panther friendly. Um, we got a group of pain paw print stencils and we gathered last weekend and used some of our chalk paint and were able to put paw prints in front of every classroom to welcome our Panthers back. So we were really excited to be able to do that and it made um, it super fun to meet them in the morning when they came to stand outside our classrooms. Super cute also. So board members, I see we have a bunch of children here. Uh, to ask questions of. Do you have any questions for them or anything you want to share? Well, hello, Panthers. Thank you so much for taking your time to um, support your school and um, do great things, especially during this difficult time. Um, who came up with the idea? I worked with Mrs. Berg to come up with an idea to be able to do this service project with our school. And is this just an example of this type of service projects you guys have done that you enjoy doing? So we've actually done quite a few different service projects. One of our service projects last year was to collect food for the second harvest food bake um, in November. We've also done some um, service projects with local state parks to help pick up trash when we're hiking um, and to clean up those areas. But we really wanted to make sure that we also worked in the community that has given back to us by giving us a place to go for our scout meetings um, and a place to gather. So it was great to be able to go back to our school that has um, housed us for several years now. Then I'll just put, we'll take a turn putting each of you kiddos on the spot, Nate. What did you like about this service project? Um, well, it was fun spray painting the school. <laughs> Definitely sounds funny out of context. Um, we also at the end recorded some videos so people, uh, kids at Payne knew what to do, right? Yeah, it was definitely fun. I liked it. Also, uh, Miss Going, uh, I think you pronounced my last name wrong. So please say yours, Nate. Uh, Sternshine. One more time, slowly. Fair fine. That also was. Mom, you're better at pronouncing it. You should do it. That's right. Yeah. Sternstein. Yes. Oh, Sternstein. Very nice. All right. Thank you. We need a lesson over here. Other trustees? I was just going to ask him, I'm sure, uh, who's excited to go back to school? Show of hands. <laughs> All right, that's unanimous. Excellent. Yeah. I just, oh, go ahead, Shelly. Oh, I just want to say I can't wait to actually go visit and stand on one of those paw prints myself. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have made social distancing so much more fun now that, that you guys have the paw prints rather than just the arrows or something else. <laughs> Can I can I ask a question? Well, how, what grades are each of you guys in? What grades are you in? First, fifth. I see Nate is fifth. Takeshi is first. Jordan looks like you're saying first grade. Benjamin first. Jennifer uh, or the kids in Jennifer's second and first grade. You guys did such a great job. I'm so glad to see you guys in your. Uh, and your scout uniforms too. You guys look great. I'm so glad that you guys have gotten the opportunity. Would any of you guys like to share any of your other favorite moments of this past weekend? Um, 
This is an honor, and we loved playing basketball this weekend, and Dad's thinking about signing me up, so I'm, just, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. Very good. Well, I, I will simply say uh, it's uh, important that we teach our kids how to give and how to think of others and how to take care of something that's maybe not, not exclusively your own. And so as much as it might seem like not a big deal to come out for a weekend and paint, um, you made a place better for the time that you were in it. Um, you left a piece of yourselves there and you made it better for your time. And so we just thank you for doing that on behalf of the school and also on behalf of your classmates uh, who you welcome back today. So thank you for the time, guys. Well done. So all of our first graders should be back. And uh, Nate, you're right. It sounds a little weird out of context to say you spray paint in the school. <laughs> I appreciate you putting that out there. All right. Well, we're going to move on to our second student tonight. And so thank you, gentlemen and ladies. You guys can can either stay at this point or you can log off. If you want to stay and see our second student, you can definitely do that. So welcome, Lee and Chesser. It's good to have you. Um, I'm first, uh, you know, going to introduce uh, Liam as an EDS seventh grader uh, who has been uh, with us for quite some time. Liam started noticing uh, some race, racist graffiti on Saratoga Avenue on his way to EDS. Instead of leaving it alone, Liam contacted the city of San Jose and received some anti-graffiti solvent and directions from them on how to remove it. He started working through the pandemic on cleaning up signs in the Moreland area and has cleaned up over 10 racist symbols and words to date and looking for more. We invited Liam to honor him and thank him for being a role model and active citizen in our inclusive Moreland community. So welcome, Liam, where are you? There you are, good to see you. You, uh, you wanna tell us a little bit about why this uh, program was important to you, and then we'll let the board ask some questions. Uh, so I was noticing the graffiti, and I, I think I counted more and more. And so I was learning uh, about hate symbols and such when I was doing my bar mitzvah. So for part of the project, you know, bar, the bar mitzvah, you need to do some good acts in the world. And so I decided to clean up the hate symbols and graffiti I was seeing. And so we contacted the city, and we got the kit, and we just went out and then fixed it. Great, board members. Liam, congratulations on um, being such a phenomenal contributor to your community. Uh, you know, I, I did a lot of um, service work with the city and neighborhood organizations and graffiti um, and heat messaging and just general blight is a huge, uh, challenge and it has a significant impact on our community and I am just so impressed by you um, not only seeing it recognizing um, the opportunity and then and then following through and making that difference not only um, for you but for everyone who goes past those signs so I just want to thank you and congratulate you and let you know um, truly how impressed and proud I am of you in all of those efforts. Thank you. Other board members? I'll say the same, like I think about um, what it is to, you know, I think about raising our, my own kids um, and the impact I'd like to see them in the world and, and just taking ownership of something and seeing a problem and then executing against that problem um, is what really builds communities. And so, it's again, really small things done at large scale with lots of people who care about their community that ultimately bind us. And so Liam, thank you for the time and thank you for um, just seeing it through. Uh, and so I hope that you will always have an eye for, for the ways in which we're welcoming people um, and how we can care for one another. So I just, I don't have any questions like why it would motivate you to do it. I, I'd ask the 99% the of us that didn't um, who walked by that sign. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Liam. I mean, especially given what we've been seeing recently uh, with an increase of, uh, you know, uh, attacks and crimes against uh, people of Asian origin, I think, you know, all hate speech is uh, is obviously, you know, to be condoned, and I think, you know, condemned, sorry, 
And I, I'm glad that you're taking a, such a proactive measure uh, on this in the community. And I think that that goes a whole long way. We kind of not only sending the right kind of messages, but also um, taking some very concrete actions in places where we live um, and, uh, and how it affects us. So thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Yeah, and just adding on, I think Moreland as a community, we are so lucky to have you like as a role model, like even for me, because what speaks so much to your character is that you saw it and that decision to take action, right? It's maybe such a small, it's, it may seem small, but it's actually huge because many people go, you know, go and drive, walk past these signs. So it's actually, I'm so inspired by you. I also personally didn't know you could just reach out to the city of San Jose like that. So now, you know, like that's another tidbit that I just learned from you and really, again, just so motivating to be out there and do something um, for the community. I just, that's really just says, you know, so much about who you are and um, what is important to you and what you prioritize. And it was just, it's just awesome to see that. So thanks, Liam. Uh, I'll just uh, finally add, Liam, uh, it just goes to show you're never too young to be a role model. Um, thanks for thinking of uh, uh, the community. There are many people who uh, will appreciate the, the work that you, you, you did and you, that you have done. So again, many thanks from the, the Moreland School District and everyone in, in, in your community. This was a, that, that was a great opportunity. And again, uh, you're never too young to be a role model and thanks for leading the way there. And I'm sure you, you have someone with you there that may have influenced uh, how you see the world that maybe you could introduce us to. Uh, this is my mom, Ivy Chester, and my dad, Kyle Chester. Congratulations. Yes. Very really, good. congratulations yeah. for, for what must be a, an incredibly proud moment. Um, yeah. I didn't know what the symbols were on the signs. He actually taught me. <laughs> and uh, when I said, wow, if you know that, there must be a lot of other people that know that and not like it. And he said, yeah. So we're, we're proud of him for taking action. <sighs> Giving me goosebumps. <laughs> I think it goes, it, you know, one other thing to, to say, and, and Liam, definitely we're highlighting you today, but I, thanks go out to the Chester family because they have done the porch portraits for uh, our MEF that have been so wildly successful. So thank you. Thanks to your whole family for the support of this community and for um, carrying that legacy through with your children. So we appreciate that. Thank you. All right. And as usual, we have delivered a little token of appreciation and a certificate to all of our, um, our, our students, who, which you found today. So thanks to Tanya, who was very busy delivering this afternoon. So very nice. All right. Thanks for coming. Okay, so bye-bye. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about today is it was an exciting day in the bond front. Um, uh, the bonds are did sell. You can see the smile upon Patty's face. And uh, because we're going to talk about uh, the bonds in a, you know, share a little bit more in detail during today's superintendent's report, we also included Chris Hyatt to share a little bit as well. So welcome, Chris. It's good to see you. You are also smiling. So clearly it was a good day for the Moreland community. I'll turn it over to Patty. Uh, it was a great day. We went to market this morning at a little bit after 7 a.m. And uh, yesterday when they sent me my login, I was questioning, well, why would I want to log in and watch? But you know what? It was actually, it was fascinating to see the orders come in and to watch. And it got to one point where Evangeline and I were in my office going, so <laughs> why we need our money? So it was really exciting. And so then we had a call at 11 o'clock to review. And I asked Chris to be here tonight because she has more of the details, but I will tell you that our bonds, we were oversubscribed by at least three, little over three times as much as what we actually needed. <clears throat> so that's really good for us. 
We competed well and did a little bit better than districts uh, who have recently gone to market that had a better rating. And so we're very happy about that. So I'm gonna ask Chris to just cover briefly um, because I know we had some questions about the taxable versus the tax exempt. So I wanted her to share just a little bit of about that with you. And then um, the law requires that we will bring an actual summary to the board for your uh, approval at the first meeting after today, which would be on April 27th. So Chris, I'll let you talk just a little bit about more of the specifics or the numbers. Sure, and, and thank you for the introduction. Um, you know, Patty, you touched on a lot of my talking points already, but great day in the market. And we were very, very pleased with the results. In all, the bond sale generated 108.6 million in orders for the only 34 million uh, that the district was actually selling. So we did have 3.2 times more orders than we needed there. We got orders from some very recognizable names, Eaton Vance, uh, Wells Fargo, State Farm. Uh, so some big name investors participated on the sale. Um, all in all, because of the great investor participation on the sale today, we were able to lower the yields for the taxpayers' benefits from yesterday to today, and overall had a better borrowing cost than what we had shown to the board at the board meeting a couple months ago. Um, so we're very pleased with the outcome all in all. And the final borrowing cost for the entire uh, bond issuance, both the taxable and tax exempt, ended up at 2.59%. Um, we had discussed at the board meeting that the taxables did come at a slightly higher, higher cost, which is what we saw in the market today. But we did work with Patty and Evangeline and the district's tax council to structure the taxable bonds to be a bit shorter than what we had last discussed. Um, so where, while the tax exempt maturities went out to 2047 as the final maturity, the taxables only went out to 2036, which meant that they ended up coming at a lower overall borrowing cost than the tax exempts. Um, so all in all, we're very, very pleased with the results and, and definitely thankful for uh, being able to participate in the sale of the district. All right, great. Thank you, Chris, for being here because we appreciate your expertise in, in our report tonight. And as Patty said, this isn't a chance really to, I mean, you can ask a couple of questions uh, if you want, but we want to bring the real report to you um, at the next board meeting. So uh, but we did want you to celebrate in the joy that that was yeah. part of our mind. Anything, Brian? No, thank you. I, it's, it's fun to see the markets actually work. And so most people take for granted that it really is a matching of buyers and sellers um, and that it is supply and demand. And on any given day, it can be a little bit different than you expected. And so it's great to have a positive uh, experience on a day that wasn't so positive for other people in some ways. Um, but thank you for, for it. And I look forward to the, the full report. Appreciate it. All right, Chris, thank you for being here. We appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Okay, and that is it for my soups report. Okay. Thank you, board members. Anything to share board member communications? No, I'm not doing that, sorry. Oh, okay. So a um, couple things for me. I attended the last President's Council meeting. Um, they're too, very busy group. Um, as you can imagine, a lot of um, just discussion about engaged um, and, and really strong group. Um, really thinking outside of the box, uh, you know, and, and I also attended the MEF meeting, really thinking outside of the box about how, how to use this year in the most meaningful way possible, right? Because we've, we've been presented with some challenges um, nobody could have in, anticipated, but with that also some opportunities. And so in, in both of those cases, the Ed Foundation and the Home and School Clubs, um, you know, I'm really impressed with how each is taking a little bit of a step back, looking at, um, you know, what we've what's been done historically, what, what worked, what didn't work this year, and, and what maybe should be different looking, looking ahead. So um, great meetings, both President's Council and um, the Moreland Educational Foundation. I also attended the last West Side Boards meeting, which was actually just last night. Um, and that continues to be a great group. Um, we, were, we had the opportunity to kind of do a deep dive given the timing. Um, into each of the, especially the elementary schools, some in the high school, 
um, each of the hybrid models and what, what that actually looks like on a daily basis um, and, and how that's all going. So I'll certainly um, share um, you know, information there too when we're on that topic. We also had the opportunity to talk a little bit about the San Jose um, land use um, conversion um, work that's happening at the city level. And that is something, um, you know, a couple of the other school districts have actually been engaged in converting some of their land use. Um, and so really unique perspectives, but definitely um, a lot of um, um, rallying around the, the idea that we want to make sure is governing um, organizations that we are, we are a part of that conversation. And so um, there was interest of possible, you know, shared resolution or something like that. Um, so I'll continue to keep you all posted as to what comes of that. And then um, we also had the opportunity to talk about um, resolutions um, related to condemning violence and things like that, which I'm, I'm sure we'll have an opportunity to discuss um, later. And lastly, I just wanted to say, I know that um, we have kiddos back on campus and it's been a rough road, but I was overwhelmed with joy and pride when I drove past a um, couple of our campuses today and saw, you know, kids and teachers um, out in the field and, and, you know, participating in school. And, um, and so I know it's been a lot of work uh, and a tremendous amount of effort. And, um, and so I just wanted to express my thanks, um, our thanks to staff and to our community for continuing to just kind of, you know, um, move along, move along and, and do what's right for kids. So um, with that, that is the end of my report. And assuming there are no other trustees, we'll just move right along to our first report, update on the pathway to reopening of schools. Okay, all right. Um, so we did have a very successful opening. Uh, very nice, as I shared um, with a few people. We didn't have too many tears with our uh, youngest children, but we did with the adults because they were just so happy to see kids back. And so in a fitting style, we're going to start with pictures of kids. So, right, Tanya, we have a little slideshow. So we'll start with that. Yep, Dennis will pull it out. A little something more I've got a plan in mind A special thing in store The light bulb inside my head Says get out and play Cause you never feel this way It's my lucky day It's my lucky day It's my lucky day It's my lucky day, it's my lucky day. fun to start with the kids and uh, they were all very happy to be back. It's a heavy lift to lift schools open uh, during this time, but um, we are so 
appreciative of our teaching staff and also all of our classified staff who have been filling holes for quite some time. We're also uh, happy to report that our distance learning launched as well today with a little over 400 students um, and that we have uh, students starting in those as well. So um, on Monday, the 29th, we will start again with two, three, and then, uh, and then on the first, we'll start with four, five with our return of middle school on April 12th. So I wanted to talk a little bit, and Destiny's on here too. Uh, we've we're, we're, we've rolled out our selection form to our middle school people on uh, distance and uh, or in person. That is due on Friday, and then the Mad Rush starts to put people in their proper places. Um, it it was really a busy week last week, and when when Monday came, we kind of went took a breath and, and are just right on to the middle school piece. And so uh, we also, it's important for you to know that the distance learning complexity gets quite large when you start to hold, uh, you know, different credentials, different classes, different uh, groups of kids that need to be together. And so we really have that in a, still in a, a planning process and it'll depend entirely upon how many students that we want in there. But we, we have a couple of different ideas that we're throwing around. I will say that uh, one of the, the concerns that has been an issue for us um, in opening middle school is the distance between the Anderson community of students that goes to MMS and, and the bus that we needed to run. The guidelines on the busing is very, very challenging. Um, uh, we, and we, we have bus, we're utilizing all of our buses and all of our bus drivers right now to move our special education students across the district in a socially distanced way. So we were without a bus and without a uh, bus driver uh, earlier this week. And I am very, very thankful for the partnership with Campbell High School District. They are going to provide two buses for us and a driver uh, and we'll, we'll compensate them obviously for their time. But they were able to work us into their schedule because getting students from middle school over to that school specifically is really, uh, was I think collectively everybody's biggest concern. So uh, a big shout out to Bob and, uh, and his team for making that happen from Campbell High School District. Um, so before moving forward with kind of the new guidelines and what's, what, what has changed, I wanna just open it up to Destiny and the board to ask any questions of Destiny about middle school schedules that we rolled out or any of the things that you might have related to the middle school process. And Destiny, if you wanna start by saying anything, please do. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you that, you know, we have been meeting as a team for reopening our teachers and our middle school administrators. And I think through our planning process and different models that we've liked and then thrown out and then have found some other ones, we really, it became apparent that we weren't going to look for one that was a one size fits all for all three of our middle school sites. And so we needed some flexibility in that. And, you know, part of that is the size of our middle school. So we have, you know, 60 kids all the way to 900 kids. We have our staffing is very different. So at some of our sites, we have our teachers that teach maybe math science or core or also teaching electives. And then we have MMS where it might be an elective only teacher. We have credentialing, which is single subject for some of our teachers and some are multi-subject. So there's a lot of different factors that go in and it's very different across the three sites. So instead of having one schedule and making it work for everyone, we came to the idea of really just having some commonalities around the three schedules. And that's where we landed, was really having um, one, that it was two half days of in-person learning for the hybrid. Also that we've um, had a full day for the kids following their be a, a traditional bell schedule. So either with the Zoom or with asynchronous work. And then also the kids in the hybrid that are at home that day, that we have at least two check-ins during the day with their teachers to, for some accountability and keeping them on track. Um, and so that's kind of how we um, approach the scheduling. And then as you saw, 
this Monday, the principals rolled out their specific schedules for each of their sites. And I think similar to how we had some flexibility with this uh, hybrid schedule, we're probably going to need some flexibility with the distance learning schedule as well when we start to build it. So as that form closes on Friday, we'll know who the kids are that have chosen that model. And it's not only like elementary looking at those kids at what grade levels, but then we're going to have to look at what courses those children are taking and then trying to match that up with our credentials and our staffing that we have. So all of those things are factored in and I think we'll probably take a similar approach to make sure that we can offer um, the best options for distance learning for our kids that choose that model as possible. Great, before we um, turn to the board, we do have public comment. So this would be that time. Okay. Do we need to set a timer? We... Uh, you might need to. Okay. Heather, I do have more of my report too, so we can- Oh, just... I'm sorry, I thought you were- Yeah, I just it's gonna shift gears to kind of oh. what's going on. So would you like me to continue? No, or go, yeah, please continue. Okay. And then we can ask questions at the yeah. end. It'll, so we might come back to Destiny in a minute. All right. Um, one of the things that you may have heard this last week is that they that the CDC, uh, the, uh, the federal, I get all the initials mixed up these days, uh, the federal uh, health department reduced the amount of distancing to three feet. And the CDC, our local California, Health department followed suit, um, and so it, you know there's a lot of reasons. I mean, there's a lot of detail in those um, those new guidelines that talk about when it has to be six feet and when it can be three feet and all of these things. But I just wanted to remind you that we have decided as a district, and it's really up to us, that we are going to follow the CS the CCP plan that was just approved recently by our local health department. And we're gonna follow those guidelines. And the reason why is because it's important for our parents to know that when that the, the game isn't changing as they are making their decision and they're, they're, they're taking this leap to come on campus. That if we say six feet, we're gonna still do six feet. If we say masking outside, we're gonna still do masking outside. Once we are fully opened after April 12th, then we'll take a look at things and if it makes sense, communicate as a whole. But I want all of our parents to know that what is in that plan, what we've discussed with our uh, labor groups and what we've agreed upon on the day that we launched the dates to start, which we uh, do intend to meet all those dates, um, that, uh, that we are gonna continue to follow that plan. So while we're taking those things into consideration, um, it does, uh, you know, just trust in what we put on our website is the latest that we will be following is what we are following. And also by reducing it to three feet, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have the room in the classroom to go full, full steam ahead because there are times in the new guidance when it does still require six feet. So you can't limit yourself. So while it does give a little more freedom of space for kids, it doesn't necessarily, it's not a game changer yet. And so, so we'll let you know when that game changer happens because that will be a very happy day, kind of like the bond sale was today. And then the last piece I just wanted to talk to you about is tomorrow our county will roll into the orange. Um, and, um, and so that has also changed some of the cohort guidance document, which is a different document that our learning centers and, and groups, it is actually being suspended as of tomorrow, but that does not mean that we are suspending the safety protocols. We still are required to follow the safety protocols of all of our, um, all of the same guidance as put out by the state. So while this bouncing ball in the press is saying one thing or another, I just want our community to know that they can trust that we're staying the course as we go through our opening plan, okay? And that's it. Okay. <laughs> I'm done. Terrific. Okay, Tanya, are you ready? I am ready. Thank you. Okay, this first one is from Sadie Thompson, who is a student at Moreland Middle School. Hi, this is Sadie Thompson, and I am a seventh grader at MMS. I would like to start this off by saying how unfair it is that distance learning and hybrid learning will not be equal. I honestly think that it would be easier for a lot of students if we ended the school year in distance learning. Sure, I get it. We all wanna go back to normal, seeing our friends, hanging out, 
going to school, playing sports. So do I. I want to go back to school. I want to see my friends again. I am not against going back to school. And believe me, I want to go back. But I think it would be safer to stay home. There are kids who, get, who got COVID and they had lasting symptoms. It caused problems with their hearts and lungs. I don't want to go to school, get the virus, and then be unable to swim and hike and bike. Or in a worst case scenario, give it to someone else. So I will choose distance learning, not because I hate the teachers or their personalities. I actually enjoy all of the teachers company. They have tried so hard to make 2020 and 2021 better for us. Also, not because I don't wanna see my friends again, but because I want to stay safe and keep my family safe. The distance learning option is seriously disappointing. I won't get as much education as the kids in the hybrid classes, and I won't get as much time with the teacher either. It isn't fair to any of us in distance learning. Education is a privilege, one that I am so grateful for. I've learned a lot in school and sure, I don't use all of that knowledge, but at least I have it. Do you really trust teenagers to stay socially distanced? MMS's students have been deprived of their social lives. Most of, most of them haven't seen their friends in person since 2020. I have a feeling that they won't want to distance themselves from each other. I don't understand why we can't just wait for the school year to end and then go back next year. More people will have been vaccinated. It will probably be safer too. I've been learning a lot in distance learning. I feel left out because most of my friends are going back to school and I'm not. They will probably be ahead of me. I hate feeling excluded because it really doesn't make me feel good. If you are going to make us go back, I think the best options are to either wait until next year or make sure that the distance learning option is the best that it can be. This is my second letter to you and I really hope that you take this one seriously. Adults are not the only ones who can make a difference in this world. Thank you for your consideration. Sincerely, Sadie Thompson. This next one is from Bria Thompson, a parent at Moreland Middle School. The teachers at Moreland have done an amazing job teaching the kids through distance learning this year. This proves that it can be done and it can be done remarkably well. With all of the focus on returning students to in-person instruction and designing a plan that meets all of the guidelines, I fear we are leaving behind the students who will continue to stay home. The students returning to in-person get consistency, teachers they already know, live instruction, and they get to leave the house for school. It feels like these students get everything. I know there are voices shouting for more, for more time in school, for more than a hybrid, or more for a return to normal. I realize those voices who want more likely don't feel like their kids are getting everything. But let's step back a minute and be one of the kids who has to stay home. What are they getting? They get to wait and see if there will be enough resources left over to create a plan for them. By not telling these students what their program looks like until everyone has made their decision, we are offering them leftovers instead of inviting them to the table. The kids staying home are not just who is left over after the in-person students return. They are not a staffing or instructional challenge. They are children. They are Moreland students. They deserve the same educational opportunities as the students attending in person. Meeting the state's instructional minutes using primarily independent asynchronous instruction is offering these students the bare minimum. In our seven years in Moreland School District, I have never felt like one of the, our students were getting the bare minimum of anything. It is heartbreaking to imagine this happening to the students who stay home. We have to do better than this. These kids already feel like they are being left behind as their friends and teachers go back to school without them. We have already proved distance learning can be done well. Let's not actually leave them behind and make sure their last eight weeks of school are an education success. The next one is from an anonymous person from Baker. Please can you address standardized testing and also the possibility of getting distance learning until children have their vaccines? That's it. Thank you, Tanya. Um, before I go to the board, I'll just say um, as a reminder, you know, we can't engage and it's not a, a public comment isn't designed to be a, a Q&A, if you will. Um, but I do want to um, do want to start with giving Mary Kay, Destiny, anyone the opportunity to, to clarify anything that they heard um, that maybe should be clarified. Um, and then we can go from there. Um, I will clarify that we are putting together the very best distance learning model that we possibly can with the constraints that we are under. Um, I will also clarify that um, there is an awful lot of research out there. 
in, in reference to our you know, last question about vaccinating children, that there is some pretty strong research in North, out of North Carolina that talks about masking and distancing as being equally effective, uh, even for adults as, as the vaccine. And so, and the, um, the spread also in children is, is very minimal according to that research where they studied 100,000 students over a three month period. Um, and that's one of a few different ones. Um, and I would also point people towards the direction of the video from Dr. Noble uh, as, as information on that. And then um, I think that's it at this point. But I think, um, I th um, anyway, I'll just turn it over to you, Heather, for questions. Great. Um, and I just wanna, I wanna say uh, it's, it's worth saying because uh, she's a seventh grader. We had, this is our second public comment from Sadie. And I, if Sadie, if you're listening, I want you to know we do hear you. We are listening and we appreciate you advocating and engaging um, the board. We, we can't technically respond um, because of how these meetings are legislated, but I want to applaud you and let you know that we are listening. Absolutely. Um, and I'll go to the board now for questions. Heather, can I also clarify? Yeah, well, please. Uh, I just wanted to say, I know that it can be hard to look at the distance learning model and say that, you know, it, it, it's kind of the leftover, as she said. However, why there's not as many details in that as the hybrid is because there are so many unknowns and we do want to prepare a great model for them. For example, for elementary, we said the same thing, is that we have to be prepared for substitutes teaching in an asynchronous model. And we were able to staff it, 18 teachers, and we're able to keep our same distance learning model that we've had this whole year. So we wanna be able to leverage as much as we can, and it might be last minute you know, things that we're putting together so that we do have the best model that we can put out there for our kids that have to choose that model. Thank you, Destiny. I would I appreciate you bringing that up because I think that it is hard to, I mean, it, the, the flavor of the program certainly changes depending upon how many students are in it. So true. thanks for clarifying. Uh, so so, so my, my question is, um, it's great to see the, the positive trend, whether we're going from red to orange or you know, reducing from six to three. Um, when you and your team get together, what are you thinking is the, the really the next milestone and, and the fact that we will likely have the predominance of our teachers vaccinated and staff vaccinated? Mm -hmm. What is it that, that uh, the next major milestone that you're meaningfully looking for that would change our kids' experience on campus? Um, yes, thank you, Brian. So um, first, the goal was 80% across the county of adults and with the county is at 60%. So that is faster than expected, which is very good news. Um, so the next milestone for me is really related to the distancing. So if we can distance, you know, if the distancing becomes less important and, and we can reduce those distancing to a classroom size of kids, and I can't really speak to what that is, you know, I mean, I know there's enough to put 24 in the classroom and, and the 32 in the upper, uh, then we can open fully, even if students are, and staff are still wearing masks. And so I think that's the one that we're, so it was hopeful to see it go down to three feet. It's not a game changer yet, but that is the one thing that is, uh, is the piece that we're looking for. And if I heard you correctly, what you're describing is we want to stay the course as what we've committed to at this point in time, and that the next time we will kind of readdress this post spring break, post everybody on campus, right? And we'll take an another look at what the data is telling us at that point in time, right? And can we make any adjustments up or down? And we've so shared with a couple of uh, parents concerned that you know they changed their mind as to what they wanted specifically in elementary wanted something else. But we are trying to staff both programs. And so we didn't allow anybody to change after the date that, you know, after all the phone calls were made and, and every family was reached out to who didn't fill out the form. So we had an answer from everybody. 
Um, but when we committed to staffing on one or the other, we couldn't be continuing to move people back and forth while we open. After we open, we will regroup and rediscuss that and, and reconsider that. But right now we just needed everybody to stop moving for five seconds to get this open, which was a successful uh, move because you know teachers in the classroom needed to count and distance learning needed to count. And even tomorrow, Destiny has quite a Herculean task of distributing uh, materials to the 400 and some odd kids who are, are in distance learning from their particular school. So she drove around all day today collecting materials so that tomorrow we can distribute those at the district office, which, um, so the, you know, it, it's been very helpful and we appreciate the parents who made the decision and then stuck, you know, stuck with it uh, and understand our constraints. So, but we know that after April 12th, we're gonna stop and take stock in where this community is at that point and, and make adjustments as needed. We're not just gonna stop moving forward, even though it's just a few more weeks until school's out. We're just gonna, we're gonna continue to move forward even if that means you know, providing more support for kids. Thank you. Did I answer your question? I hope I did, Brian, yeah. Can I uh, comment? Uh, I'd like to acknowledge that um, uh, the amount of, uh, you know, the excitement that I saw that, that through the presentation of having the kids finally back at school, all the work that um, the staffing and the leadership did to make this happen. I want to acknowledge that um, it, it was definitely exciting to see those faces, um, that little video of seeing all the, the kids back in school. I do want to acknowledge that that really warm my heart. I felt really good about it. Um, and uh, that the, the work that you guys have done to make that happen um, really showed through. Um, moving on to the acknowledgement of, I know Destiny, the, the difficulty with uh, getting set the middle school schedule sounds to be incredibly hard. And I know you and your, your staff and leadership staff have um, trying to put this together. I'm curious, if you, um, if uh, what is the consideration with um, uh, families that have both, uh, if they're returning back to hybrid, if they have kids in both elementary and now they decide to also do hybrid for middle school, is that uh, also taken into consideration how the, those two will mix? Um, I'm not sure what, what is. Um, yeah, it was really mainly a factor if we were going to do. Um, not the AM PM model at the elementary site. That's where we really had everyone aligned. At this point, with the times that are gonna be happening, it's similar to how we would have um, our regular staggered start times across the district. Um, so that is not as big of an implication as it was before when we were looking at um, having full days at the elementary level when our, we started our initial planning um, last fall. And before we take any other questions, I do need to correct the record. Brian, I said the 12th, it's the 19th that the middle school is coming back. I apologize for that. We've been kicking around some dates. <laughs> the wrong one came out, so. And uh, can I just ask another question? Is there, um, with uh, the schools and having both the hybrid and also our, uh, you know, our, our students that are also continuing with the distance learning. Uh, is there, has there been any, I know it's kind of looking uh, far ahead, but at least to the end of the school year, uh, an opportunity to reconvene any of the, these two groups together, uh, especially those that are finishing up their fifth grade or eighth grade, um, if they're gonna be in distance. Is there uh, any planning on that? Yes, we discussed that, and you know the the guidance on um, end of year you know events for promotion are starting to come out and be discussed across different districts. And uh, we talked about the importance of having those students you know be a part of it at the in, within the school site program. Those who are on distance be a part of that because they have been part of that community all year. Yeah, I would just I would love to see those guys all come together, especially on the on their last year Absolutely. together. So 
Yeah, I just like to know. Thank you. Yeah. I don't have any additional questions. I too just want to echo um, what's been said. Just hold on one second. I apologize. I'll be right. Uh, <laughs> um, all of the work that staff has done, um, not only this last year to make sure kids remain the priority um, and education is the absolute best that we can offer. Um, but um, leadership in returning to campus um, safely, working with staff to make that happen, teachers, the classified, I mean, just everyone coming together um, to support students. And so um, I just I want to echo our appreciation for um, what has been a tremendous year um, and um, and how we've been able to move forward entirely because of the teamwork that everyone has put forward. So I just wanna say my thanks, our thanks for that as well. Is there any, anything else before we move on to the next item? No, okay. So we're on to um, action and discussion items. 6A, resolution 15, 2020, 2021 for Dave, the employee. I think Heather, you just had a perfect introduction uh, for this, <laughs> our employees have gone above and beyond uh, this last year and really need to be recognized and commended. And so we're asking you that the Moreland School District recognizes May 12th, 2021 as the day of the employee in honor of the many outstanding contributions and services provided by teachers, classified employees, administrators, and confidential employees in our district. Great. Are there any questions, comments? A motion to approve. I'll be happy to move. Can Second? I just ask? Can I just ask really quick? Uh, just a question. Um, yeah. This is this is obviously different from the recognition of like Teachers Week, which I believe happens like the week before. But I know this is for the employees. So this is just sort of a distinction, uh, more or less, for the day of the employee being uh, acknowledged. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. You're you're correct, Ryan. And um, you know, this year we made a, a conscious decision um, collectively not to do the teacher of the year or single anyone out because we just felt that the effort uh, of all employees across the board needed to be recognized. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that clarification. Question, um, was there a specific reason why May 12th was chosen as the day? <laughs> that's a great I'm question, sure. Shelly, and I'm new enough to, uh, typically that's the week that it's usually chosen, so that's, okay. that is, <laughs> and it does coincide, as Ryan mentioned, with some of the other celebrations, so it is very close by. Well, I'll, okay. I'll second. Okay, so uh, just as a point of clarification, so uh, typically we need to have a motion and then a second, and then we can engage in more dialogue, so um, we're a little a little out of order, but we're okay, right, Tanya? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brian. So we'll do a roll call vote. Trustee uh, Chatrathi. Aye. Trustee Hong. Aye. Trustee Pencil. Aye. Trustee Salas. Aye. And Trustee Sutton, aye. On to item 6B, approve uh, declaration of need for 21-22 school year. This is an annual action that we asked the board to take. It, it is nothing out of the ordinary, but it does give us the opportunity to uh, have some workarounds in credentialing and um, be able to make some excep exceptions with uh, the CTC that um, we might, might we might need. Many times we don't even access this and 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 don't utilize it. In the past, when when the CLAD credential was a big deal, we would use it for that but there are some situations where we may have a student that we needed to place, perhaps a special ed student in a certain class, or perhaps um, a single subject teacher being able to teach um, outside of, of that. So that there are a variety of different reasons that we might use it, but 
Chances are we won't, but it gives us <laughs> the ability to continue to move forward if we need it. So we do ask you that you annually pass this declaration of need. Yeah, I, I know it's pretty perfunctory um, as, a, as a safety net, right? And if ever a year needed one, it could, it could be, hopefully not, but it could be this one. Any, any questions, comments? Uh, a motion? I will make a motion to approve. Thank you, Shriram. And a second? A second. Thank you, Brian. Sorry, Shelly, I beat you to it. You even had your hand raised and everything. I can, I can remove it. I don't, I don't want, I just didn't. I, I know, I, there, I, know I have a lag. I'd forgotten to be on mute, Shelly. That was all that was. That was, I was not usurping. You're a, a pre, pre, pre unmuted. Brian is very excited to have mastered the mute. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we'll do a quick roll call vote. Uh, Trustee Chatrathi. Aye. Trustee Hong. Aye. Trustee Penzel. Aye. Trustee Salas. Aye. And Trustee Sutton. Aye. We may have to go to hold up signs, you know. <laughs> yeah, if, if you can't get me in order, for sure, Dr. Going. If I if I if you can't bring me into decent, <laughs> well, I was going to say schools back in session and raising hand is is an important part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just modeling good behavior, you know. <laughs> and I want I want to respect my colleague. I did not. It's a great show. Uh, so uh, we're on to the consent. Uh, any questions? Comments on the consent? I just, before we, before, um, I just have one comment and that is um, just my appreciation for keeping board policies current. That is no small feat. Um, and we certainly, um, you know, in years past, many years in the rears, um, you know, have struggled to keep those current. And um, I, I was especially aware of, of the, um, the policies that are in front of us tonight. I know cabinet um, you know, reviews everything first and brings us to us in, in, a, in our report first and then in, in the board um, agenda. And that's why it ends up on the consent. But um, you know, there's some very um, important topics. Uh, well, all topics in policy are important. But um, some that are especially um, time, time not sensitive, but um, recognizing what a what a unique time this is, more so, especially as it relates to the board member electronic communications and things like that. This is, you know, an ever moving topic and um, subject. And so, I just want to acknowledge that um, I know that's that's huge, a big task on staff, um, and so important. Um, and I'm really, really grateful that we continue to stay current um, on all of our policies. And uh, we will pass that compliment off to Tanya who keeps us well organized, Shirley who helps to make the edits and uh, mostly uh, our three assistant soups who review and bring them to cabinet. But it is an important piece, Heather, and this it's been especially important throughout this period of time because things are changing so quickly. And uh, I'm, I, I too am very pleased that they, um, they get a little leery when Tanya has a new batch, but um, there's a little competition between who has the least amount to review, but um, it's not, not a, the highlight of their jobs, but it is something that uh, makes us stronger as a district for sure. What's well, an important, it's an important use of time. Um, we certainly in the past had a situation where we were so behind, we really had to kind of, you know, bring everything current as quickly as we could. And, and the, driving, the driving principle behind that was legislation, making sure we were current with, you know, all of the changes that had happened um, from the legislative um, lens. But but what was unfortunate about that is that we couldn't, we didn't have the bandwidth, and this is years ago, but we didn't have the bandwidth um, to then apply the Moreland lens because there are some things that are unique um, in Moreland that we wanna make sure. So I just, I just know that when times are busy, this is like the last, the least fun thing to do, but. And not only that, Heather, but that is an expensive endeavor in both resources financially and resources of time. 
I've yeah. still done two such uh, in-depth reviews and they've taken weeks of time to do them well and thousands of dollars. And so I think this is a, an example of a little bit of ongoing maintenance pays off in huge dividends. So. Uh, so with that, uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent in aggregate? So moved. Thank you, Brian, and a second? I'll second. Thank you, Ryan, we'll do a roll call, roll call vote. <laughs> um, I don't know if it counts if you raise your hand after you. <laughs> uh, Trustee Chatrathi. Aye. Trustee Hong. Aye. Trustee Penzel. Aye. Trustee Salas. Aye. <laughs> and Trustee Sutton, aye. On to our closing items, future meeting dates. Uh, so our next uh, meeting is on the 27th of April, which is, seems like an eternity, but we do have a break in there. And um, I think it's an appropriate next uh, meeting date for us. I don't see that we would need to put something in between. Great. And um, anything from board members? Uh, yeah, Heather, um, I think I just wanted to, sorry, I just wanted to check in on the dates before we move on to announcement reminders. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I'm reading your mind. Okay. No, we're no. Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Announcements and reminders request, Shelly. Yes, I do have an, uh, a request actually. Um, so I think just you know, as an Asian American woman and a member of the Moreland community, I, it would be very remiss of me not to bring the rise of anti-Asian violence to the table as a topic of discussion. Um, I mean, personally, the past week has been very difficult for me as I'm attempting to kind of just process the horrific killings that occurred in Atlanta and then, you know, just the overall rise in the anti-Asian hate, um, especially, you know, and just with just a little bit of background, like since you know, the outbreak of COVID, I think there has been about 2,800 documented hate, inc hate incidences against Asian American Pacific Islanders. And then actually over 700 of these incidences happened in the Bay Area. And I know that Santa Clara County has recorded its highest number of hate incidences within like the past decade. So it's just been a very over overwhelming um, topic just in my hand and I do want I understand that you know right now our priority and focus really is getting our students and staff safely back into the classroom and I and I don't deny that but I do think that you know Moreland's dedication to our students kind of goes beyond academics um, and that a part of our core responsibility is to teach students you know, to be like very good citizens of the world, um, to uphold the principles of just equality and respect for people of all backgrounds. Um, and I also think it's important to note that our community, Moreland community, about 30% of our community members identify as Asian American Pacific Islanders. And so I believe it's part of our duty to really stand in solidarity and find ways to support our fellow community members. So I'm hoping, and I'm proposing that for our next board meeting, I know it's a little bit ways off, um, if we could just find some time and space to discuss this. And ultimately, you know, I hope that the board, we, we can, you know, put out a statement or make a resolution to condemn violence violence and like harassment toward Asian American Pacific Islanders and kind of also just reaffirm our commitment to building school cultures that are fully supportive of, of all of our students, staff and community members, despite, you know, what their background is. Um, yeah, so I know that was just really long, but I do really want to highlight and mention that and see if we could bring that to the agenda next, or to our next board meeting. So Shelly, we, we did do one for uh, Black Lives Matter and uh, would be happy to gather a variety of them and, and do a draft at the next one, if that's appropriate. Yeah, I think um, so that, you know, we talked about, you know, what does it look like and, and um, you know, we can, we can certainly visit that. Um, I think it would be helpful um, just to refresh our memories, um, 
what we what we did pass with Black Lives Matter that wasn't that long ago, but of course it was in the same similar vein. Um, I do have, as I mentioned, um, um, at the West Side Boards meeting, we actually mm -hmm. did a little, you know, sharing of the various um, resolutions that are being passed around us. And so, Mary Kay, I'd be happy to send you those links. Um, and maybe what we can do is put it that information in a Friday report and give the rest of the board the opportunity to um, kind of weigh in as to whether or not, you know, like we've done historically about whether or not it gets placed on an agenda or, or if there are questions. Would like the Black Lives Matter one, would you like us to consolidate it into a sample for ours or would you want to just share all of them with the board? Um, I believe we compiled it into a sample. Uh, we did. I want to be sensitive and make sure there's, um, you know, the majority of the board wanting to, because I imagine that'll take more than 15 minutes of time. And so, um, you know, we, we have our governance agreement that, that acknowledges that if something's going to take longer than that amount of time for staff, that we have the board, majority of the board interested in requesting um, that. So I'm just look for, to my fellow trustees to weigh in. So I, I would, I would choose to skip the step of um, a Friday report uh, in order to figure out if it's agendized. So as a person, I would say, I would support looking at a draft uh, and agendizing it. Uh, just, I think that would make for three and I think that's probably enough for what you need yeah, for, it is. for right now. And that way sure. we, we spare the drafting, pro we spare the back and forth on the Friday report and just uh, synchronize a draft um, for us to have a conversation around. I, I, I appreciate that. I think in the interest of time, Brian, that would help us out. Yep. Yep. I think that probably would. process. You did. You did a great job, actually. <laughs> I just let's we'll take we'll spare we'll spare one step. Amen. All right. Uh, any anything else? Announcements, reminders, requests. Just real quick for trustees. Uh, oh, everybody's done their seven hundred form. Uh, hopefully. Uh, if you haven't, please do. Um, and I don't know who's on next for President's Council, but I'm sure we'll be reminded. Um, I do have something, Heather, too. Yes, please, Mary Kay. So um, sitting on our screen all year long has been a bell. And that bell stands for somebody who will be leaving us on March 31st. And that is Dennis Guerrero. So behind the bell is Dennis. Mm -hmm. And so I would be, I won't make him turn on his camera. There he is. Oh. <laughs> so I would be remiss if I didn't take this moment to thank Dennis uh, for all of his work from um, the time I recruited him to come to us in San Mateo, from San Mateo until now. We, I shared with him today, um, we are better off as a district than we ever were, than we are today and what we will be 10 years from now with the planning that, that Dennis and Patty together have done, but the thoughtful approach that Dennis has taken. In addition to that, he's continued to provide training for his staff that was new and revolutionary for our techs. Um, he also has created documentation that used to be in the heads of our technology staff, like important passwords and timelines and things like that. There is now a historical reference. Some might kind of not understand the topic unless you're in the tech world, but the title of it is the knowledge base. And the knowledge base has detailed examples and explanations for just about anything technological that did not exist before Dennis was here. And so, while um, it is you know, non-techies, it's a little hard to navigate uh, that techie world. Um, we now have a, a really firm grasp of where we're going technologically, a firm funding because of it. And uh, it, is, it is with great appreciation that I thank him for his service and, and also at this time wish him well in his promotion as he moves on to help with bigger greater things across the county that I know are gonna help our neediest population in Santa Clara County. So I just wanted to give you an opportunity to say anything to Dennis before we say goodbye to him. 
Well, now that I've mastered unmute, take that, Heather. Um, at, you know, at Dennis, it, uh, you think about the ways in which um, we support students and a lot of it's, you know, teachers in the classroom. But I grew up in the military and I know that for every one soldier you put in the field, there are seven or eight people behind the scenes in order to do that. And I'm always reminded of how many people it takes to teach a student. Um, and this year, there is no other time uh, that you could imagine the inability to get to students um, runs through technology. And so um, we've done, I think, an admirable job to, to get to our students, but there were those that we still couldn't get to. And I love that your heart is ultimately to see that all those students um, benefit from uh, what technology can offer them. And so thank you for caring for our students uh, and thank you for caring for the students that maybe are the least in that, in that hierarchy of technology need or greatest in that technology need. Um, and so I just look forward to what you'll be doing in the future, but thank you for the imprint you left on this community. Yeah, having been in, in the technology industry for, for a long, long time, especially as a more, my role, particularly as a behind the scenes uh, kind of a guy, one of the best compliments that you can give to a person in technology is if you never hear about them, <laughs> because that means that everything is going great. And, uh, and I think uh, just that, that just goes to show that, you know, everything just works, everything just is functioning as it should. And as uh, Brian was saying, this year probably stretched the resources for the district more than anything else from a technology perspective. And that, you know, I'm sure there were some hiccups here and there, but by and large, it was like incredibly smooth. So I think all of that is just goes to the foundation that you've laid. And uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, for everything that you, as Mary Kay was saying about everything else that's looking forward. Um, uh, documentation is one of the most hated things in, in the tech space. And the fact that you put something like that together means just so much. So thank you for, for all of that. Really appreciate it. I'll just say thank you, Dennis. Um, it's technology for me is like magic. So if you're, you're like, uh, you're like the guy behind the curtain, the Oz behind the curtain. And we don't, it's actually good to see your face after so many months, even though we've been on zoom. So I'm glad that you uh, took a, took a moment to uh, put, turn your camera on and allow us to see you uh, again for maybe one of the last times, but hopefully sometime in the near future. But Again, uh, you make it look, you make it work like magic. It it's helped everyone in the district. So I we really appreciate uh, all the work that you've done to put us in the in the place that we are right now. So thank you. Yeah, and I just want to say I've always it's so nice to put a face to the name. I've always wondered who was behind the bell. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, I know like everyone else has said. I, I mean, what else could I add to that? But I just you really were the link that in this crazy time of technology and Zoom that linked us all together. And like you are leaving some very big shoes to fill and. Um, but like everyone said, excited that you are carrying on your passion for students um, on a more, on a bigger level. And just again, thank you so, so much. Um, and like Mary Kay said, because of all, all like your dedication, your work, whoever comes in will, you know, have an easier time because of all the work you have already done for, for them. So thank you so, so much. Really appreciate it. And I'll just echo a lot of what's been said. Um, I, I want to just add that I'm, I'm aware how above and beyond you have always gone, not only for our staff and our kids, but for our community, our greater community. Um, I know that you have been very responsive and, um, and it just, can't, I can't thank you enough for the foundation that you've laid. You really took where we were as a district technologically and um, made sure that not only did we have everything that we needed in place, but a solid plan to make sure we could maintain it and we could make sure to be able to fund it. And we are in um, such a strong place as a result. Um, 
for me, obviously, um, it's even more than just magic. <laughs> um, but I really appreciate and have just a tremendous amount of respect for the, the impact you've had on our district. And that is something that will um, be felt for many, many years to come. And I am um, very excited for you and for the even bigger group of kiddos that you're going to um, support with your wealth of knowledge. It is nice to see you without the bell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to thank the board for all the kind words, Mary Kay. Definitely it's, uh, uh, you know, different emotions running through. It's, uh, it was almost five years. July would have been five years at Moreland um, taking fond memories a lot of good uh, friendships with me, you know, they'll still stay in contact. Um, but now, you know, I'll be going to the next phase of my career and uh, working at the County of Santa Clara. So there's some interesting projects there, especially as it looks for countywide initiatives of bridging the gap between especially Wi Fi is a classic example of pro uh, providing internet connectivity to underserved communities. So Looking forward to that challenge, uh, much bigger scope, um, but Moreland will always you know, have a special place in my heart and uh, they'll be sure to be on the top of the list of areas we need to address with the uh, Wi-Fi connectivity for our communities. So I wanted to thank you for the memorable years and all the support um, you've provided me. Um, thank you. You're welcome. All right, I know you like to hide behind the bell, so you can put your belt back up if you want, <laughs> but you're welcome to stay. All right, that's it for me. A nice big reveal. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on announcements, reminders, requests? All right, so um, board, we are um, we are going back into closed session. I, I'm assuming we're using the same link that will just magically work. Yes. Okay. So for um, the rest of you, we are adjourning op open session and we are returning to closed. Thank you all so much. Have a great evening.